Hello everyone, Ian here from Abel City in Burbank and today I am checking out Wonderlook. This is the onset color grading software program from TV Logic. I'm going to take you through an ASUS workflow and I'm going to show you how to export that LUT to various post-production applications. Here's the opening page and what I'm going to do is go into color correct. And when I do that, Here's our opening page, and I want to note a couple of things. First of all, uh, the layout that I have right now, I'm going to change things around slightly. I'm going to try to give myself a little more room on here to look at some things. So I'm going to just move things around just a little bit. And when I've done that, I'm going to go to Layout, and I'm going to Save to Slot 1. And then I'm going to move things again, because when I go to Export, I want to maybe have a little better view of what I'm exporting. So I'm going to go to Layout, and I'm going to save that to Slot 2. Now I'm going to go to Layout, and I'm going to load Slot 1, and it goes back into my uh, the setup that I just had. So notice nothing is happening here. That's because it is not seeing a live view just yet. But before we get to that, I want to note up here, uh, right here, let me zoom in so you can see this. Notice that I have what's called a corporate gold license on this. There are different levels of licenses that can be purchased for this software program, and they give you different levels of uh, functionality. The gold corporate is the highest level. And to the right, notice you have a scaling LMT, no let, and then scaling. What this is is uh, the signal path for ASUS workflow. So this section right here, this is the input. This could be called the IDT or the Input Device Transform. And then on the other end of it, we have an ODT, which is your Output Device Transform. I could go into a long uh, discussion about ASUS, but for this intro, I'm going to just sort of give you the highlights here. And what ASUS is going to do, it's going to take the input into the program and it's going to transform it into ASUS color space and then output the appropriate output for the delivery device. So with that in mind, I'm going to show you two different ways that you can set up that workflow. The first one is if we go to preset and if I left click on that and I'm going to go to uh, Wonderlook camera log, I'm going to go down to various cameras and the Bottom one, I'm going to choose is SDR, and the reason is because I'm going to a Rec. 709 monitor or standard uh, dynamic range. And I am working with a Sony camera, so I'm going to choose this preset of Sony. Notice the input says BMW FS5. Let me zoom in just a little bit so you can see this a little better. All right, so it's saying FS5, and we're going to render out to Rec. 709 with a gamma 2.4. That's great. So I'm going to select that, and I'm going to apply selected look. And as soon as I do that, you can now see that we have a different look on the uh, monitor. But so far, I don't see anything down here, and that's because I need to click on my live view. And as soon as I do that, a couple of things happen. Uh, my mouse, if I hover over this, you're going to see this little window to the right gives me different values for the luminance that I'm looking at. And also notice that my mouse uh, goes to different levels of luminance on the waveform. So here we have a waveform monitor. Let me make this just a little bit bigger. All right. And maybe I'll go and I'll resave that to slot one. All right. So here I have a layout that shows me IRE of 0 to 100 IRE for my waveform. And I also have corresponding legal code values. So code 64 to 940 are the legal code values for NTSC. Keep in mind that we're sometimes capturing, most of the time capturing in 10-bit, which is 1,024 code values. But for broadcast, we are checking that out to 64 to 940. I also have a tangent panel attached uh, to this demonstration uh, that we'll see in just a second. So let's look at the second way that we could uh, introduce our path for uh, processing the signal from the camera. 
I'm going to click on no LUT. As you can see, it goes to that traditional grayish look of a log signal. And I'm going to go to where it says cloud LUT. And if I left click on that, it opens up another dialog box. And I'm going to go first to uh, Maker, which is what camera am I using? You can see all the uh, all the heavy hitters here are here for professional cameras. We're using a Sony product, so I'm going to go to Sony and notice it says 32 cameras. So lots to choose from here. The next pull down window I'm going to go to gives me a list of all the Sony cameras uh, that are available uh, in this selection by this manufacturer. Now I'm using an FS5 for this demo, so I went ahead and I selected this and what happened was it downloaded a bunch of IDTs and ODTs that are appropriate for that camera. Also notice that I've selected the Venice as well. So all it means is when it says please download first, and literally click on it and it's going to download the latest uh, the IDTs and ODTs. Now usually an IDT or input device transform is made by the camera manufacturer because they know the characteristics of their log curve best. So now I can go in and I can start choosing and getting very specific about what type of signal is being sent in. So in this case, I'm going to use S-Log3 Cine. I'm shooting under tungsten and uh, none for the desaturation. Over here, I'm going to do the target display as Rec. 709. I'm going to go with a Type A. I could choose... Uh, any number of transforms, but I'm going to use this. And I could add a, a coloring attribute to it that would add a sort of a grade on top of it for color. Notice that you have choices here of different types of uh, response from different 35 millimeter color negative stocks. So for instance, you have the Eterno stocks and you have some Kodak stocks as well. And then a choice of gamma. Once I've made the choices that I want, I click on open and now I have those attributes applied to my uh, signal. Now I can start getting to work in here about how I want to make this look unique. And I'm going to start on the simple menu uh, and I'll show you tones in just a second. If I go to the simple like the name implies, it allows me to do sort of these big, broad changes to the image. For example, I can go in and I can start warming or cooling the look. And if I want to reset that, I can go back to where I was. Uh, the DUV is for a green magenta shift. And if you see, if I start moving this around, you're going to see, there you go, it starts taking effect. Reset that. Overall saturation which is great. I'm going to show you some other functionality in here that makes this really unique and really interesting. And if I go to tone, uh, notice my tone curve here on the lower left hand side. You're going to see that it now shows me how that is mapping out when I start playing with an overall tone curve and changing the contrast. If I want to get more um, detailed in this in terms of getting my contrast right, I can go into LGG Lift Gamma Gain and you can see each of these is named accordingly. So I'm going to take the wheel of my uh, tangent panel here. I'm just going to roll down a little bit on my lift, bring up my gamma, and bring up my gain a little bit. Okay, looks good. Right, bring the Lift down just here. All right, got a nice contrast there. Now I can go in and I could use my track wheel, track balls, and notice that when I do that, now I start adding some. I'm going in on the gamma and I'm running it up towards red, and you can see that overall everything is starting to get warm because it's a uh, it's a primary correct. So I'm going to go hit reset because I'm going to show you the next thing, which is pretty interesting here. I could also work in offset power and slope if I wished with the tangent panel. Here I'm going to go to vectors because this is really interesting. I'm going to collect or select saturation first. And here I have uh, 36 levels of adjustment. I'm going to go to the red and if you watch the chroma du monde at the top center, I'm going to push out on this just a little bit 
and immediately I go back and go up and you can see that I've already started to make a change in the saturation and if I clock left or right I start making those hue adjustments that we would expect there it goes now I can also this, this is really amazing because we can work in different levels and get these adjustments to our hue and saturation are really very precisely defined I'm going to go over and I'm now I'm going to change the brightness level and now watch that top center and you can see just by moving this around a little bit and I can change the range of adjustment here so you can get these very finite adjustments very very nice it's almost like it's a primary correction meaning that whatever I change in that area is, there's going to be an effect on the rest of the image but it has sort of the feel of almost like a secondary which isolates a specific attribute of a color so once I have this set up now if I want to keep this I'm going to keep look new so I'm going to go down to the bottom here it's got a little icon of the camera I'm going to left click one time and it just populated over here to get a better picture of this I'm gonna to go to my layout and I'm going to load from slot 2 and now that automatically expanded this area and now I can see what information has been put down if I want to change this I just simply click on it and now I can go in maybe I'll delete that and maybe I want to call it scene 1 so now I have scene 1 and now I, if I want to go out and export this I can there's several ways you can do this but uh, I could go to the export tab here or I could go just to the menu here and I could export this look or I could export selected or select all 10 looks which is great so if I have a been shooting a scene I can take all of those uh, looks I've generated and output them all at the same time. I'm just going to do this one look and that opens up a dialog box that asks me uh, where I want this to go. So for instance if I wanted to uh, go to DaVinci Resolve I can now output uh, the appropriate cube file for that uh, for that program and you can see there's a host of other uh, programs that it supports as well and if I want to go to Premiere let's say I can also output a cube file that is appropriate for the color science associated with Premiere so we get very accurate results um, based on uh, the information that I feed to it that's pretty much so the overview of the round trip of course there's much much more to this program but that is in a nutshell basically how you're gonna work with Wonderlook. That wraps up my look at Wonderlook, the onset color grading software program from TV Logic. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.